Hello, BookTube, and welcome to Poetry Tuesday. We're going to continue Poetry Tuesday from now until forever, where we read contemporary or relatively contemporary poetry in order to understand it, in order to appreciate it, in order to make Steve less knee-jerk intolerant of it. And today's poem uh, is a little different than the ones we've done. It's not ripped from the headlines. It's it's 50 years old. That's still contemporary, in my opinion. <laughs> uh, but I want to I want to introduce as much variety into this as I can without distorting it all out of proportion. So this is from a new paperback. Uh, this is the collected poems of Galway Cannell, uh, and it's uh, this. Is, I mean, this is a great big thing. And I've been I, I worked my way through it when it was new last year, and I've been working my way through the paperback release to try and like this poet a little more than I than I have typically done. Uh, and he was. He just died recently, just died a few years ago, and he was uh, won the Pulitzer Prize. He was one of those big, granite-jawed national poets, one of these serious literary figures. Uh, there have been a few like him. They are slowly but surely dying off, and I don't see a generation replacing them. Uh, he was, uh, for years, the Poet Laureate of Vermont, uh, and this this particular poem is a long one. It's it's a sequence of poems called uh, For Robert Frost. It's from his 1967 collection, Flower Herding on Mount Monadnock. Uh, and I'm just going to read uh, one segment of that poem, because the segments are radically different from each other. It could stand as, alone as a poem. Uh, mainly, I confess, uh, I'm still grappling with what I think about this poet. I'm still trying to figure out whether or not he's mostly fraud, or mostly playing on a level that I'm just not seeing. Uh, and I, I'm Curious, I admit, I'm curious mainly here to get your responses. Uh, so this is this is section number three of his poem for Robert Frost. Uh, the first section, I just don't know what to make. <laughs> I've got, this, is, this is the one that I think is the most serious. Uh, so it's, uh, and you're going to recognize, of course, you're going to recognize the, the Robert Frost poem that it is sort of playing around with. Uh, Once, walking in winter in Vermont, in the snow, I followed a set of footprints that aimed for the woods. At the verge, I could make out far in the pillared dark an old creature in a huge, clumsy overcoat, lifting his great boots through the drifts, going as if to die among those dark trees of his own country. I watched him go, past a house, quiet, warm, and light, a farm, a countryside, a woodpile, in its slow, smokeless burning, alder swamps, ghastly white, tumultuous snows, blanker whitenesses, into the pathless wood, one eye weeping, the dark trees, for which no saying is dark enough, which mask the gloom and lead on into it, the bare and withered, the deserted. There were no more cottages, soft bombs of dust falling from the boughs, the, the sun shining no warmer than the moon. He had outwalked the farthest city light, and there, clinging to the perfect trees, a last leaf. What was it? What was that whiteness? White, uncertain, the night too dark to know. Uh, and I maybe maybe it's unfair to read one section of a poem and then try to figure it out. But uh, I don't believe that these sections were written anywhere near each other in time. That's a, that's a, a textual question for another day. Uh, but I wanted I'm wondering what you make of that. Uh, I have always thought that this poet was uh, the word that always came has always come to mind to me in the course of his career. I've I've watched his poetry over the years, seen it in periodicals and little books, and the word that's always come to mind is labored. And I, I'm wondering if if that poem strikes you that way. I like some of the images in it quite a bit, uh, but this is a type of uh, mid 20th century professional poetry that seems to me to be almost completely harmless, almost. Uh, a novelist conception of what a serious poet should be, uh, and I'm wondering if you if you got that impression, or if you if you know this poet and maybe like some of his other work. He's famous for some much shorter poems that I didn't read today. Uh, that that bit that we read just now, I think it it, it displays a kind of sure virtuosity in the use of the language. But I don't know, once again, we've been talking in, in Poetry Tuesday about the feel of a poet, a, the, a feel of a poem, the thing, that the sensation of it, apart from its technical ability. And I don't, I don't see it there. I don't, 
I'm cur anyway, I'm curious to know. That was one part of uh, for Robert Frost, and I'm just curious to know what you made of it. I, I will transcribe the part down below. In fact, if I have uh, the time, I'll transcribe the whole sequence so that you can see it in C2. <laughs> uh, but otherwise, I'm going to wrap this up for now. I, I wanted to, uh, since I'm since I'm reading around around in this book and and uh, sort of making notes in it, I wanted to to include it in Poetry Tuesday. Uh, so we'll we'll. Uh, We'll wrap that up, and we won't come back to Galway Canal for a while. I want to do him a, at least a couple more times this year, but there are a couple of other working 20th century poets who just recently died that I also want to come back to in the, do in Poetry Tuesday. We have The key to remember here is that we have an infinite number of Poetry Tuesdays. So what did you make of that? I will write it all down below, uh, and I, we've got other literary stuff to talk about, so I will be back. <laughs> Thank you, Book 2.